What's up, everyone? I'm here at NAM talking to uh, myself and also Misha Mansour of Periphery. Yay! I, I didn't prepare you for this, but it's probably going to be awkward. Oh, yeah. is it going to be awkward? Yeah, probably. It's never awkward. No. We've known each other too long. Yeah. How did we meet, actually, first time? Uh, in Stockholm on the Dream Theater tour, right? Right. Would that be the first time? It was. Yes. I was I'm like, who's this tall Swede who's showing me around his cold city? <laughs> and, uh, and you were, you were really nice. I think we went out for Thai food. Oh, yeah, and that's right. That's right. And yeah. I, was, I was probably a little bit uh, starstruck, to be honest. Really? Well, yeah, I was probably not really, um, I don't know. There's like, okay, so Swedish people yeah. are like distant. We are. Right? Yeah. And I can't ever tell. You're impossible to read. So I had no idea. I thought, I thought you were just being like really Swedish. Okay. Right? But you know what I'm saying? Like they're quiet, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I know. And reserved. Yes. Until you drink. And yes. then it all comes like flying out. Like yeah, you're yeah. the craziest, just, yeah. the craziest people. It's like this weird dichotomy yes. of just like very, very quiet. Like, yeah. and then just everything's gonna go. Yeah, I mean, nuts. We're, we're not as used to open up quick. Yeah, to that's people, true. I mean, like we talked about earlier, we're like we live in a very cold country where you just go about your business when you just want to go from point A to B. Yeah, because it's so cold outside. So you don't talk to your neighbors. Uh, of course we do. Because uh, you have to. But I try to. The government I, no, I, try to I, I try to avoid them as much as possible. <laughs> but but still, I mean, it's uh, no. We're being nice. I, we have good neighbors. Yeah. And, uh, they like uh, metal music. And, uh, they do and, like metal. Yeah. So, I, I love I love Stockholm. I just hate cold. Yeah. But I thought that that was one of the. I think that maybe was like my first time there, or one of my first times yeah. there. But like that was I, a good tour. You were opening up for Dream Theater. Yeah, that was that was on Dream Theater, which was a that was an eye opening tour. Yeah. That was like a big lesson for our band. I, I don't think I don't think a lot of people know this, but like that was actually a really hard tour for us. Okay. Like, uh, you you when you're touring at that level, you learn. And you know how, like, I mean, you've toured, so you know what I'm talking about. It's like, there's a lot of things about the road and a lot of things about touring that you just learn by making the mistakes. And they're like, yes. don't ever do that again. Yeah. Right? Or like, you got you to gotta work on that. Yeah. So there's a, there's a few things, like, when you tour at that level. Um, have, you, have you toured with, like, a band, like, like, a bigger band like that, that has, like, like a catering crew and things oh, like yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we've done, like, Arch Enemy and Michelle. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we've done that. So that's different than, like, when you're just with like kind of a mid-level band, like 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 with, if you tour with Periphery, it's yeah. not this, it's not the same. It's not that level. That's more casual. Yeah. And we had to learn a lot about like the etiquette, like s stupid things, but like you know, clean up after yourself. Don't leave yeah. a mess in catering, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, just there's just a way to behave, and uh, you want to be out of everyone's way. But everyone was really nice. But it just took us like maybe a week. And we had our computer failing. That was the other thing. Oh, oh, at the show as yep. well. Yeah, right. we probably told that. you about that. No, yeah, I remember that. Dude, I it think. was a nightmare. That was terrible. And, and it was one of those things where we were like, well, that sucks. And this is the difference between a band that has like no experience at that level. We're like, well, that sucks. It's well, I hope it doesn't happen. But then like, you know, about a weekend, like John Petrucci comes to us and is like, you guys need to figure that out. Yeah. And we were like, oh, okay, that's, damn. That's the sign. You know, he didn't even <laughs> yell at us. It was like no. even worse. It was like he did his like stern voice. Like he didn't raise his voice. <laughs> it's like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And like, dude, all of our, all of our hearts sank. Like all the air just left the room. We're just like, uh, we need to figure this out yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. And then you better believe we had that fixed within a few days. But that was so nerve wracking. Our computer just kept dying. Yeah. And we were playing race car. Right. Which is a, it's a 15 minute long song. And we just die within the first like three minutes. And this is that first tour where we were not using pedal boards. We were using the Axe yeah. Effects, getting the MIDI changes from the computer. And I think it was our first time using in-ears as well. Mm -hmm. So it was all this new stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like our backing tracks are gone. The click is gone. Matt has no beat to follow. And then we'd come back and we'd be in the wrong place. Yeah. And like our patches are still going and we didn't want to stop. Mm. So yeah, that was, that was a hard tour. But you were a ray of sunshine. Oh, no. I'm, I'm and that's the whole kind. point of that story, right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Good, good. Yeah, I like that. I like that ending. Yeah. So, yeah, it, I, I can totally understand. I mean, going from, because you were going from, maybe I compare it to like a smaller tour and then going straight into like a, like a bus tour or whatever. I yeah. mean, it, it becomes so apparent. It was a very big jump. Yeah. Because we, 
you know, like you normally do these these kind of like incremental steps, yeah. but that was like a significantly big jump. It was a it was a big sort of opportunity given to us. Did you feel that that the dream for the crowd was hard to please or like hard to Yeah. Um, because obviously you're there to do your best job to gain as many new fans as possible in a genre that's in yours. But necessarily not the people that are listening to you or like Well, I'll put it this way. I was a dream theater fan growing up. Yeah. So I understood why they were as yes. difficult. Because if like I went to a dream theater show and I saw any band that wasn't dream theater, man, you damn well better be incredible, you yes, know? So exactly. it was a very I knew that we were in for a tough, a tough crowd. But I think we were up to the challenge. It's just we didn't need, you know, our our computer failing against us. Yeah. But, you know, I'd say we got all sorts of feedback from you know winning over some crowds to like you know people yelling go home you know <laughs> but <laughs> but it's fine it's you know it's good i think that was early enough where it's like you're just happy to have the opportunity yeah. you're just kind of happy to just be on the road i mean you remember that like you don't tour that much anymore do you no, no. but you remember like those first few tours it was just like i don't even care yeah yeah that was like, the, the that terrible world. show that was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think I think like there was a bit of that. It was just really excited at like what was happening. It was like it was like you know even if it was bad, it was like I am on stage in a band that's opening for Dream Theater. Exactly. Like I wanted to be John Petrucci. Yeah. I spent a lot of time thinking that if I played guitar enough and studied his stuff enough, I would become him. You know, yeah. there was a point in time where I believed that, and now. Yeah, I may be failing, but I'm failing right before Dream Theater. Exactly. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think there was that kind of innocence to it, which was, it's all gone now. I'm Now I'm a jaded, crotchety old man. Am I allowed to swear on this? Oh, yeah. Crotchety old fuck. Yeah, great. Oh, man. Great. Yeah, that's that's what I am now. It sucks. Yeah. So, so you guys are working on, is it your fifth album? Or if yes. you count in the... No, it's our fifth album, which yeah. is why it's called Periphery 4. Makes sense. I mean, come yeah, on, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Great, <laughs> great job. <laughs> but hey, dude, we're good at other things. We're yeah. not good at counting, but we're yeah. good at other things. Right. So you know, don't judge us. But you're just done, or uh, yeah, it's and you just did a music video. Or... Yeah, we just shot a music video. That's in mastering. That's finally like, how good does it feel when it's in mastering? It's like not my problem. Is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it Erman? It's Erman. Okay. That's oh yeah, what, he's mixing yeah. your album. <laughs> exactly. He told me I was I was talking to him about it. I was like I was like, wait, you took a mixing job because he's like basically given yeah. up on mixing jobs, and he's so good at it. Yeah. But it's like you know I think I think maybe it's a little bit our fault, but we kind of introduced him to people as like a mastering engineer. Oh yeah. And he's so good as a mastering yeah, engineer that it's like, well, we I think since uh, Juggernaut was the first one, maybe Clear, I forget what, but like, since we started using him, we've used him for everything yeah and it's kind of hard to imagine going to anyone else yeah so just like the last set of ears he's just so meticulous man and that's what it is it's just the ears that you trust because yeah. it's like you know it's like at the end of the album like nothing means anything anymore no, right exactly. and you've had to listen on that last set of revisions so many times you're just like i think maybe all of this is crap and it all sounds terrible yeah. like i had a few listens throughout the end where i was like maybe maybe this is all a mistake and maybe, maybe we need to start from scratch. But it's just that fatigue, you know? Yep. There's no way to, to take that step back. And then you have a person that you really, really trust. Be like, dude, it's fine. Yeah. It's great. Like, yeah. don't worry. And there's a couple things here, and we're going to fix it. Well, I mean, you, you've been listening to the album for ages, like, over and over and over. You're yeah, totally man. sick of the album. So sick of it. I mean, in some ways, we were sick of it before we even started recording it. Because yeah. we took so long to do yeah. this one. We, we wanted to take our time. Uh, and it's been great because we've been able to take a couple breaks from it. But, like... Uh, I haven't listened to it at all since we turned it in. <laughs> yeah. And I'm probably not going to listen to it for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. a great album. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> right. We're, looking forward so, to it. But I'm never going to listen to it again. I can mention to you guys that uh, when I started doing my YouTube channel, uh, one of the first videos I saw and got a little bit you know, influenced by was when Misha was trying out, I think it was an Angle Invader. Mm, I remember Playing that, yeah. a song and, you know and playing playing the song through like a stereo or whatever and then having the amp playing yeah, the song yeah, together. Yeah. And it was I think it was the first time I seen like that home recording casual playthrough yeah. in a way. And it kinda like sparked what I've been doing when I started when I do the amp demos and you have a backing track and you play and record the amplifier. So I mean So I get royalties. Uh, and we have this on video. 
And I'm I'm glad that you admitted this. No, no, no. I have, because I have my legal counsel. It in doesn't the next count. Room. It doesn't count because if you Barry, just do, will you just take a note of that? All right. It doesn't thank count you. because I do it and I make it better. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm the original idea. <laughs> I know, but I didn't say it until now. It's almost and as now if it's you, like pre You know, when it's uh, it's been done. It's ten years ago. It's done. It's like Fine, as if like a band came out there and invented a whole style of music, and then someone else. Just came by and sort of ripped it off with a little bit of melody and like tried would to pretend like that. it was their own. Yeah, I would never do what that. What kind of band would do that? Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. Yes. Horrible. Yes. Shameful. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, <laughs> if you stop talking for a bit. No, just kidding. But what I'm trying to say is that, uh, I mean, you've been also very gear, gear oriented and like really into gear uh, from an early age, like when you start playing guitar. And I mean, now you have your Jackson signature guitar. Uh, which looks amazing. By oh, the way. thanks! And uh, do you have any news for that? We're at Nam, after all. Yeah, we have. Uh, we updated the Pro Series. Okay. So that has a uh, roasted maple neck and fretboard. Like now. a USA thing, or so the the Pro Series is the 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 import one. Okay. And gotcha. the USA one, we we kind of sw swap out years. Okay. But yes. Okay, cool. So you have the Jackson signature, but you also have Horizon Devices, mm -hmm. which is your own brand, together with a bunch of friends, I guess. Yep. And you're doing pedals. And um, get good drums. Get good drums, exactly. Have the amp with PV. There's a lot. I like gear. Yeah. We like we like gear. Yes, exactly. We really but like gear. I'm trying to say also that you you understand the thing that you need to start your own company and you know that you are you're the modern musician in the sense that you have your band, you have your music, you have your interest in gear, and now you're also starting to you know venture into the world of the music industry of gear and stuff like that. And it's a very modern approach. People, they value your opinion so much that when you start something like that, it's like very credible. Yeah, it's weird and, how that works, right? Yeah, it is, it is. But because you have the same thing too? Yes, exactly. That's why I'm trying to talk about this because we have a, a same kind of mentality yeah, yeah. about things like that. So, but it was uh, by accident, it was very genuine. Yes. We just like gear. Exactly. We're just like, oh, this is, this, all this stuff makes me happy. How, how old is Horizon Devices now? Is it? Uh, two years now. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah because we launched uh, 2017, like and winter. The first product was Precision Drive? Yeah, it's just pre Precision Drive. We've been kind of coasting on one project, uh, pro uh, pedal for a while and our new one's coming out should be shipping the Apex preamp, yeah. which you tested out. I did. I and, did. and we're very grateful. We'll send you everything we do forever. Great. You know that. So. I heard it here. I, I really like the nano attack, by the way. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's perfect. My favorite thing that you said about it, which is very true, is that the best feature is that it's blue. Which is, that <laughs> yeah, is, that exactly. is, and that is the best it, feature. It is your blue. It is 100% yeah. my blue. Exactly. Everything should be that color. So, okay. you know. Do you have any, do you have any tips for up and coming musicians that I think you covered it man that's what it is I want to hear from you it's the modern it's the modern th this is the thing is like the the industry is is shifted so there's no money <laughs> there was already when we were first talking there was already no money yeah and that's when like there were still some people buying CDs yes. right but now the streaming model I remember I think one of the fundamental differences between my point of view and a lot of other people mm -hmm was that people would have called me a cynical asshole because they're like, well, this, you know, this CD thing can't last forever. It's going to come around. So there's going to be a change. And I was right. like, yeah, there's going to be a change and it's going to suck for artists. Yeah. And that was the difference. So I think some people are like holding fast hope that maybe something was going to happen that was going to benefit it. the artist. And I'm like, dude, when has that ever happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I was like, there's going to be a change and it's going to suck. So I told everyone in the band, I was like, look, like, we're probably never gonna make money from this band. And if that's a problem, then like, that's cool. I totally get it, but maybe it's not for you. Yeah. And everyone who wanted to be in the band understood that like, all right, let's do this because it's fun, you yeah. know? Let's do this because it's- For it's the right reason. Dude, it's exciting. It's, you get to play shows, you get yeah. to play your own dumb music in front of people, like that's, that's awesome. And then, you know, talking to other people and people who've been in the industry, it's like, yeah, that's, that's great, but that's not sustainable. Like by the time you hit 30, you're going to want some stability. Yeah. Have, some, have some backup plans. So, you know, Matt was doing lessons and, you know, we, we played around with that. And as you said, like we noticed that people were, for whatever reason, right or wrong, seemed to value our opinion on gear and companies were very eager to send us stuff yeah. in the same way that they are with you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's being an influencer before that word meant anything, right? But yes. but that's basically what that business relationship was. 
And it's like, all right, well then how do we parlay this into something that can be monetized, right? So you talk about signature products, collaborations. I sort of became a music producer by accident, just by helping Tosin with the first Animals yeah. album. But it was just basically trying to find any way that I could make money that didn't involve me having to have my nine to five job. Yes. Um, which you, you had a nine to five, right? Yep. Like, so it's like everyone starts there and then you're like, well, what can I do to spend more time? Uh, there's a dark side to that as well, which I don't talk about a lot, which is like you get sucked into that machine of it and can actually take out all the fun. Because yeah. then before you know it, it's like it's a job. And like it's not that music is a better job once it's a job because anything that's a job when you have to do it, mm. well, especially if it's something that you kind of rely on inspiration, it's like, doesn't matter. You yeah. got to do it. Yeah. There's your deadline. It can like really suck the fun out of, yes. out of that. And, and it's a very dangerous thing to play with and you have to find a good balance. So I think this is where, we, where we've been struggling lately, but this is what you have to balance mm. nowadays is like this inspiration versus money versus yeah. available sources of income. And I just tell people, Whatever you do, diversify. Yeah. You know, if you really, people come to me, they're like, you know, oh, I, I don't want to be rich. I want to just make like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. I'm like, dude, good luck. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's really, really hard to even make any kind of living, to, to make a poverty level living. Yeah. And if that's where you're starting, I think you've already lost because there's people who don't care about that who are just ready to give it everything, yeah. right? Yeah. So I know it sounds like really, depressing advice but that is that is i mean do you agree or disagree with that i totally agree i mean it's it's hard for people to grasp because of their love yeah for the music and uh, i remember i had a video where i said like the album format is dead yeah basically yeah i mean in some form it is for the newer bands i mean if you're an established band albums will will still have a role but I, if you're I don't even disagree with you. No. I, I agree. We do albums just because we like albums. Because exactly. I grew up with albums. Exactly. But I don't know that it's necessarily the best. No. The it's best the way to get do, your do music Do you feel up. that at least when, because now you have your own label, do you feel that the less, there's less of that stress and you can have more inspiration now that you maybe you set your own deadline for the yeah. album? Yeah. Or do you feel that... So you know what's interesting? Yes, but not in the ways that I thought I, I would because we had creative control. Mm. We had full creative control before, but you know what it is? Not having someone breathing down your neck. Because yeah. even if you're allowed to say no, which we're allowed yeah. to say no, we still had to have those conversations, right. Right? right? And you still have this dynamic of like, oh man, like, you know, I know that they don't understand us. Yeah. And I know that there's nothing that we can say to them that'll help them understand us. Right. Um, and that's not to say I'm not grateful. I'm definitely grateful of, of Sumerian and everything yeah. that we did with them. Like, we really owe well, the beginning. probably of, part of your of whole. Course. Of course. So incredibly, incredibly grateful. But then as time went by, it's like, look, I think we have a very, I think if you have a very clear vision of what you want, yeah. then it could be better to do things yourself or align yourselves with people that, that understand you. And that's what we did. Is we sort of reworked our team yeah. to people that really, really understand us. Like our manager now is a guy that, has proven that he really gets us. He really understands our vision mm -hmm. fundamentally. So we don't have to have stupid arguments, yeah. you know, because, because he, the things that he will suggest to us, it's like, oh yeah, that's exactly the kind of yeah. thing we'd want to do. Um, and yeah, we get to just be really selfish with the music now. And yeah, yeah we took a year, almost, it'll be almost a year and a half between our uh, last show and the next one that we play, you know? Okay. We yeah. needed a bit of a break. It took as long as we wanted. And he was like, all right, you know, if that's what's going to, make a good album then, then do that and, and it's nice to not have that pressure yeah um, but as you, you said sometimes that might be the, the you know the kick that you need when someone's you know putting fire up your ass and you know you have to complete something yeah people well. this is the other side people don't teach you yeah that. like it's kind of assumed like when we were growing up it was kind of assumed that we would have like a nine to five right yeah exactly. like something like where you would have a boss being like, you show up at or this you time. Or you go to college or right. whatever. There's a path. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then you, you do your job and then you go home and then that's your time and yeah. whatever. Uh, buy a house, have kids, whatever. Yeah. It's all kind of like, and then, and then when you stray away from that, there's no like rule book of like, hey, here's how you manage your time. Yeah. Here's how, how you be your own boss. Right. And these are things that are like, if left unaddressed, can really mess you up. Yeah. In ways that you don't realize. And I know you've had to deal with all these things because you're like, ah, I could do whatever I want. I could.
play video games for three days oh, yeah. straight and yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But that's not what you want to do. <laughs> You'll feel terrible. Yeah. And there's no, there's no one to be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that, right? Yeah. So you have to learn that side as well. And yeah, sometimes having someone breathing down your neck is good, but you kind of have to learn how to be that person exactly. for yourself. Like, so we did set deadlines for ourselves, mm. but in a way that would be sort of responsible and in a way that wouldn't interfere with us it's also the kind of thing where it's like, all right, well, if it's not ready, we just, just push it back. You exactly. know? No one is yelling at us. No. But yeah, without the deadlines, you'd never get it yeah. done, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think that, I mean, did you ever have like a regular day job or did yeah. you always? You did. Because yeah. I think that, like, like you said, I mean, people have, have a hard time understanding the amount of work that needs to be put in to even have some sort of chance yeah. to get out there and uh, obviously I, i'm a big believer in like work ethic Th that's something i brought with me from my job i was working as an accountant ah oh. so i you know my my desk job you know eight to five when i quit my job to solely work on youtube and music i try to bring that in and you that know, explains so much it does, right? right? Yeah, but yeah. It, it gives you so much more advantage than everyone else that just thinks like, oh, fuck, I'm free. And no, you're not. Yeah. Free. I mean, I, I try to, obviously, I do what I, whatever I want to do. I, if I want to play video games one day, I do it because yeah. it, that's important for me. But I still try to keep a work ethic because I know that if you do it, I mean, you're going to be so much more ahead of everyone else. Yeah. Because I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, you, when people say that, uh, the musicians are lazy. I understand. There's a lot of lazy musicians there is. out there. Ever and try to start a band? You'll you'll find that yes, out real quick. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, that, that's that's what I think uh, is very admirable to see with Periphery is that everyone works their hardest and you know works their asses off to make this product that is just you know amazing. And you put out albums and you do tours and it's, it's really. It's really refreshing to see that you're a band that's growing rather than just a band that's kind of, you know, just keeping afloat. I feel like we've hit our ceiling, if you I'm think? honest. Yeah, probably. Okay. I, I mean, it's metal. It's, uh, you know, I think there's maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. You know? But, but I still think that because, you know, I see it, you see a lot of bands, they're just basically riding the wave. Yeah. It's like they release albums and they tour a little bit and they kind of like, they grow, but just like, not really that much. We'll, we'll see what happens with this one. I, yeah. I have no expectations. Honestly, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I think we've seen uh, the majority of our growth. Maybe I'm wrong, yeah. but I also, I also like where we are. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's fun. We, we get to play fun shows. Um, if we grow more, it'll be great. But if we don't, it's kind of at the point now where I'm not relying on periphery in any financial way. Yeah. It can really just be a passion project. And right. I love that, man. Like, I'm sure now you have that relationship with music. Mm. Now that like, I mean like, I'd say your, your YouTube career and your guitars are probably your main yeah. focuses and your, your main sources of income. And then the music can just be like, yeah, because I like to do it. And that's like why we started, right? Yeah. It was like when we started, it was like, oh man, this is a cool thing I can do. Yeah. Like, look, I made a song. Mm. It was never about like, oh, let me show it off to people or uh, let me, let me uh, worry about this album cycle yeah. and fulfilling this date and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. it was never about that stuff. And that stuff sneaks in. And I think that's the stuff that like finally has taken all this time to, to get around to this point where it's like just a passion project. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, that's how I felt when I first yeah. started writing music and it was just kind of, just because I could. Yeah. And now I'm doing it with, with, with my friends. And to talk to your other point, it's like, you know, we found, found a group of people that are all like minded, but man, that's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Takes so long. Yeah, yeah. I've been through so many members. It's yeah. like, it, it's very easy now to look at like, oh, wow, like you got all these members, but man, that is, that is a tough one, you know, yeah. not just finding um, the right members, but the right members for you because every band has their own dynamic. Yeah. Everyone has their own expectations. Yeah. So someone who's very, very good may not work with this dynamic yeah. for reasons that, you know, the average fan wouldn't understand. Yeah. But as someone who's been on tour, yeah. you understand how like, yes. you know, when you live in, cr in close proximity to yeah. someone, it's like, you gotta have a dynamic that makes sense, yeah. right? And yeah. I'm very lucky that we have that, but I'd say that's the only reason why we're even still doing it because mm -hmm. otherwise we probably would have all been like, yo, it's not worth it. Yeah, right. exactly. I think that that might be the, the part where bands that kind of holds back bands maybe yeah in a sense that maybe they're not pushing for another album 
if they're not enjoying themselves being on tour or enjoying their their uh, time being together or whatever i don't know i mean like, you see you see all sorts of dynamics yeah exactly it's relationships it's the exactly. same it's the same stuff you know it's so boring so so you're married right mm-hmm. like what do they always say it's like communication's the most important thing yeah, right exactly. well it's the same thing in a band yeah. Yeah. and i've seen you know so we've we've man to get to this point we've put a lot of work mm-hmm. A lot of time, yeah. a lot of sessions. You know, right. it's not been. It's not just been this thing that's magic. It's something we work on yeah. all the time. But it's something that we understand the value of. Mm. And just like in any any marriage, any relationship, it's something that, like, especially if it gets serious, you're gonna have to work on it yeah. often yeah. and respect it. Mm. Otherwise, it'll fall apart, right? Yeah. So I think that's the one thing is we've got a group of guys who understand, like, yes, this is something that needs to be maintained. Mm. It's not something like, oh, okay, we got it. All right, cool. And there's always things that you can improve and you have to communicate. Yeah. Like you, we, we all understand that so it makes it easier when there are problems. Yes. You don't have resentment at the end of the tour and you don't hate someone's guts for like three tours no. and you're like, oh, okay, it's him or me, you know? Right. And we've had those in the past, you know, but we, we've had to work past it. Yeah. So it's, uh, people, people don't look at that side of it, no. but it's, that, is, that is one of the most challenging things of actually being do in like a van. a van tour in the US. It's just the ultimate test. It's one of them. Funny enough, like, you know, our first tour ever with Sumerian mm-hmm. was, I think, the tour where they were like, all right, let's see if this band can tour. Yeah. Because we were in an in internet band, yeah. right? So it's like, let's see if they break up in the first week of tour. Yeah. And we almost did. Okay. <laughs> we almost did because we, we weren't getting along with our singer at the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So. But but we we kept it together because we were like, man, that's just that's exactly what we need to do is break up on the third day of tour right. just like they think we would, yeah. you know. So we we stuck through it. But yeah, man, that is that is a test. If there's ever been a test, is get you know five or six or seven guys into a tiny van tour around the states. Did you do that? I never did. Oh, good for you. I, <laughs> I, it's been kind of posh. I just jumped straight into a to bus tours. Oh, you're lucky. So I never did that that grinding in that way. Yeah, that's 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 rough, man. That's yeah. uh, you know, it's it's got this sort of romantic charm to it in hindsight. Yes. Yeah. But I'll tell you, our first tour was a six and a half week long summer festival tour. Oh yeah. Okay. It was called Thrash and Burn, and I think we had to be at every venue at like ten thirty or eleven a.m. Oh, yeah. And the drives were on average, I want to say anywhere from five to eight hours. Yeah. And the show would close out and we get paid out around midnight oh, so if shit. you figure we have basically wow. enough time to drive to the next venue and then so we'd be doing shifts and um yeah man it was uh i still think it's very important to for you that you did that grind to understand yeah we did that i mean we did that for a little bit yeah. and and that is a that is a very important thing to do um when you're starting out, I mean, it's great that you were able to skip that. Some of our members were able to skip, like Mark. Mark kind of was fortunate enough to to miss most of that, yeah. you know. Uh, and and I think he did one of his first tours was uh, was in a bandwagon. So you know, but but he's also great on tour. So it's not like you need that. Yeah. But it definitely showed a lot of people in the band, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not cut out for this. And yeah. there there were some people that were was like, all right, yeah, like this is this is the reality of it. And yeah. there's some bands where. It, just stays at that level yeah. that's where it's at yeah. you know we were lucky but there's no guarantee that you could do that for three four years and you may never be able to justify getting out of that so exactly. you know that's that's where that was yeah okay so um one thing that you mentioned before and i noticed as well that you've always had a it's, maybe it's a little hard to show because we don't have any jackson guitars here but you had a really i can i can play your yeah guitar. but these are all new so you can't play them either <laughs> <laughs> so you can't play the guitars okay. no but you had a really particular uh, picking yeah. technique where you hold the pick like something like this I, yeah i used to hold it like this for the longest time just i never took yeah. guitar lessons and you know, i knew you, you had to hold the pick so it was yeah. literally if you were just picking it up off the ground yeah. right yeah. and no one ever said anything otherwise so yeah. just played it like that with three fingers and people always made fun of me but i was like oh well yeah, you know? <laughs> but, but, then, but then you decided to switch. I did, and that's that's very admirable because I know myself. I have kind of like a backwards yeah uh, picking type that sometimes it's not. Well, how op- do you hold? It's not optimal. So a lot of people they angle forward like this. That's hmm. when they play, you know. Yeah, I angle backwards. Like interesting. That. So I anchor the thumb. So you know what's interesting is that the way I held it, it would be angled backwards. Yeah, but 
it's when you when you play you have a really good attack yeah i didn't like the attack yeah and that's why i switched well, yeah it, it, i'm kind of point that I'm, i don't so, like my attack but so so you would hold yeah it you like, would anchor the thumb like a little bit like like this almost yeah because so now like now, now i hold it like this yeah that's the like yeah. the, how most people play yeah so how long did it take for you to kind of Dude, it took a year and a half yeah it was really hard that's what i'm scared of. so there was well no but so the reason I did it is because I felt like I was hitting a plateau. Yeah. So uh, Nolly, who is no longer in the band, but yeah. who was in the band for a while, also, incidentally, even though he played bass, was the best guitarist in the band. He yes. has the most flawless technique. Yeah. He was kind of inspiring me to get better, and I was just like, man, I got to get better at guitar. Like, yeah. I was just really bummed out with my skills. Yeah. So um, I was trying to learn a, a lot of stuff, and I found that a lot of stuff was not translating. Yeah. Because just... Any of the right hand stuff was just, I couldn't adapt it. He was like, oh, you want to, you know, kind of look like this and have this sound. And I just couldn't emulate it. Yeah. And then I found like when I was holding it, like it had that kind of sound. And like if I was just a, sort of just trim pick an open, mm -hmm. open string, I was like, oh, wow, it's already got that kind of character yeah. to it. But I can't play guitar like that. No. So what I started to do was um, there were certain parts of our live set where I was like, all right, I'm going to switch to that mm -hmm. strategically and okay. just play this one riff. Or this, and you know, you know how it is on tour. Like after about a week, week and a half, like your set becomes autopilot. You yeah. don't really think yeah. about. It. So I was like, if I can even get a couple sections in like this, then maybe I'll train myself. Um, and this was right before Periphery Three, so we were we were kind of just playing songs we knew well, and I was just switching out what, like I forget exactly what parts. I think we have the song. Uh, 22 faces, which, you know, it's like, bada, 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 you know, and that, like, there I switched for there. Yeah. Anything that was sort of al alternate picked. Uh, but it was, it was tough and it was frustrating. But just kind of chipping away at it. And then when I was home from tours, like, then I'd practice it a bit. And then Periphery 3, I was really sort of proud of myself because I basically forced myself to track all my parts with the new okay. technique. And then I'd say after that point, that's when I used to think at one point like that there was some merit to doing it this way. Yeah. So I was switching between the two. Yeah. But after Periphery 3, I was like, no, I'm just fully converted. And um, it really did it's help. Impressive. It, it, well, I, I, dude, it's brute force and frustration. Yeah. I was just so upset because I was like, I've been playing guitar for this long. And it just sounds like shit when I play. Like I was just so annoyed. Yeah. Um, and, and I just wanted to sound better. Um, but yeah, like it's, I, I, I just switched, I switched over and I noticed like, oh, all of a sudden, like I can do these alt picking exercises and they sound right. Yeah. Like it, it's too bad that we can't like plug in because there's such a big tonal difference. I'll show it cynic, uh, cynic, at clinics sometimes. Yeah. Like the difference in tone, it almost sounds like a really dull tone this way and then really sharp and aggressive. Yeah. So there's like a very audible change yeah. and it was totally worth it yeah yeah I, I noticed that as well it's just that i'm so afraid so you to, actually have tried doing it both oh, ways. I, I can do i can practice right. the, the real way and i i noticed like i can like like sweep picking yeah it's super easy much easier right yeah it's just yeah, like holy yeah, shit yeah, 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 open yeah. up the world yes, to sweeping yes. it's like but also uh, i just found like tremolo picking a lot easier and uh the tone changes obviously yeah, a lot yeah. but the upstroke sounds like absolute horseshit. Really? Yeah, like riffing upstrokes. Interesting. I did, I did not like. Well, in my way, the upstroke sounds like just as a downstroke. So that's your sound there. But I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Oh, I was having I this discussion with someone today. I don't think that like anyone likes their sound. No, I guess. You know, I don't. I've, I've just come to terms with it. I, I know yeah. I'll never like my guitar playing. I know I'll never like how I yeah. sound. And yeah. then when I listen to someone else play, like I'll listen to you. I'll see you play and riff on stuff. I'm like. Damn, I yeah. suck. You know, like it's, the grass is greener. It like is. Always. It really is, and it's just like it's just you have a different sound. So like, I want I want that and not what I have. What's up? What's oh, up? Hey, wow, that's the most quiet quiet entrance right there. <laughs> the rest of the Solar Guitar team are are drunk. We always are. Yeah, <laughs> always drunk. All right. So yeah, I I guess that's it. Great, uh, great. Thank you for interrupting. No, it's fine. I was just about to round off anyway. But uh, yeah, so nice to have you. I, I'm I'm so glad this happened because I wanted to do this. Me too. And you know how it is at Nam. Is like things do not happen. We're doing this at what ten? It's ten ten. Yeah, and you're not heading out after this. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, I'm just gonna go to bed. Now. Yeah.
I'm not going to go. Are you going to go party now? No. Fuck no. no. <laughs> we're, we're old and lame. We used to party, but we don't anymore. Like, <laughs> like no. I, I, It's a Thursday, and it's late, and I wanted to go to bed. But I came out here because I love you, man. Oh, I'm dude. super proud of you. Dude. And Can you give me a hug? Yeah, man. Like a good. Guys, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> this is Misha of Periphery. What's up? I can Bye. see all of you. Yeah. All 300,000 of you. It's probably more now. It's more. It's yeah. definitely more. Yeah. Maybe 400,000 by this point. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Click that. Click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Oh, yeah, bell. shit. He has a, you have a YouTube channel, right? Oh, yeah, but don't do it. It sucks. Okay, don't subscribe. Don't, don't, don't See subscribe. Ya. Subscribe to this one. <laughs> you thought it was going to be awkward? No, I just say that. <laughs> I just say that. It, you know, it's when I interview a Swede, it will be awkward. It will be awkward. <laughs>